All right, welcome back. Welcome to our class this morning. Uh, let's begin with the time of prayer and then we'll get into our classes. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity once again to study and learn practical insights on uh, church planting and how, Lord, you have called each one of us to build your kingdom. And even as we plan and prepare and learn, oh God, uh, we pray, God, that you will speak to us. You will give us new ideas, strategies, Lord, birth in us, Lord, plans, the things of God that we will, Lord, uh, fulfill through your strength, through your power working in and through us, Lord. We thank you for what is ahead. And uh, uh, we just pray, God, that even as we study this hour, Lord, that you will minister and you will speak to us, oh God. We open our hearts and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, last class, we started with chapter 14. Uh, we began with looking at the stages of growth. Uh, you know, we looked at how, uh, just like the natural body, uh, you know, goes through stages of growth, uh, the church also goes through stages of growth. So we did the first one, which was the pioneering stage. Then we looked at administrative, or organizational, and structural stage, meaning there's a, there's a time when um, as the church grows, uh, you need to get administrative, uh, you know, uh, get the administration of the church. You got to organize things, got to have a structure. And uh, I also shared a couple of, uh, uh, you know, strategies and structure that we follow here at APC. Um, now, again, those are all come over time, right? Uh, we learned it. We learned, okay, this is how, you know, we can be more effective. So. Uh, so the best part is maybe if we are starting a ministry, you can start off with having these structures in place. You know, sometimes we may feel, oh, hey, man, we are a small church. We don't need to be so organized or so we can just get things done. Uh, but remember that you're setting the foundation. Right? So as the church grows, you see many more people joining and you already have set things in place. Right? So we looked at that. And then we looked at the pastoral team stage, team ministry, and senior pastor. So, um, as the church grows, the the you know new leaders are raised up, and eventually those leaders can become pastors in the church. And then the pastors have team ministries, uh, and then the senior pastor goes into a place of overseeing, right? Overseeing and uh, the function, the overall direction of the church. So the senior pastor. Uh, is no longer, you know, uh, uh, involved in every small detail, right now, because as the church grows, uh, you have leaders who are taking care of it, like pastoral team, team leaders. Uh, but uh, he's overseeing; he or she, as a uh, pioneer or the senior pastor, is overseeing, developing leaders, uh, giving. You know, very important was uh, to trust your leaders uh, to help them be faithful. And when we trust them, they will automatically be faithful in what they're doing. And today we'll get into the fourth point, which is the equipping, building, and the trainer stage. Right now, over time, what's happened is the church has been growing. Now, after you have all of this in place, you have a pastoral team, you have a uh, team leaders and team ministries. Then you have the senior pastor who is overseeing all of this. Then comes a phase where as a church, you will look at equipping others. So it's no longer only within the church, right? It's it's not that, OK, uh, I need to make sure that my church is doing well. I need to make sure that we are growing. We are growing spiritually, growing in numbers. Uh, it is no longer just the leaders doing the ministry or the pastors doing the ministry, but everyone is involved. Right? So one of the uh, something that we always believe in at APC is that every believer is a minister. Every believer is a minister. So we all have gifts and talents God has placed in us. We all can serve some way or the other. Do so you believe that every one of us can minister right uh, and then there's this emphasis on supernatural ministry right uh, moving everyone into a place of signs wonders and miracles now 
this is an important phase because in the initial days as a church if you are beginning to you know talk about the gifts of the spirit now we must understand that there are different kinds of people who will come into church some of them will be people who are just new to the faith some of them may be way matured in the faith some of them are still learning growing have a lot of questions and so different uh, levels of maturity they are in so emphasize something that we can do is emphasize supernatural ministry right talk about supernatural ministry talk about how god is a god who heals god is a god who does miracles he wants to release prophetic he wants to uh, you know release the gifts of the spirit within the church and every believer has the gifts of the holy spirit we, and we can flow in these gifts what are we doing we are emphasizing that the supernatural ministry is there within the church so it's not like only in the book of acts there are healings and after that there's no healings no uh, we, we are emphasizing we're encouraging people to step into uh, the supernatural now even as we do this uh, it's very important as teachers and as pastors and leaders uh, that we set guidelines be there to uh, you know probably give them uh, set guidelines on how to minister to people right so we can we can have good motives uh, right hey i want to learn the prophetic but uh, also how a prophetic word is released or how uh, a word of knowledge is released how, uh, and if god is leading you towards praying for healing how do you pray for it and uh, things like that like just the practical aspects but uh, emphasize the supernatural ministry emphasize that ev everyone can flow in that right so then the senior pastor focuses on equipping and imparting uh, and and then comes in the pastoral care now when we talk about pastoral care there's so much right there is um, there's caring for the members uh, and, and so something that we have at APC is we have a separate member care team and and so pastoral care could include uh, you know just going for house visits hospital visits right and over time as your church grows uh, you know you'll have hundreds of people now it is obvious that a pastoral team of five or six people cannot do all the house visits, hospital visits, because they also have other tasks to do. So what you can, what we have at APC is we have something called as a member care team. So the member care team, they call up our members, talk to them. Uh, many a times members don't want to share um, what they're going through in life because they feel hey pastors are already busy i don't want to burden them with something more um or you know hey i i i wanted somebody to visit home but you know i know that pastors are busy so sometimes they may hesitate uh but when you have a member care team uh they're willing they're there for you know house visits hospital visits uh also for funeral services uh you know there are so many other things that need to be prepared for funeral services and all many other things right within the church just caring for the members um and and so we have this in place as well uh, and then the church begins to penetrate the community uh, and catch the vision of being a missional church right uh, so one thing one of the aspects that we try to do at APC is uh, we are doing it right now is that uh, we try to penetrate every sphere of influence, every community. Uh, and as we do that, we also have missions, right? So as teams, what we do is we, um, we, you know, we, we know we have people all across our nation. So um, we have two, two to three days conferences. Now these conferences could be, uh, a pastor's conference, it could be a youth conference, it could be a leader's conference. Uh, uh, then we also have uh, times when it is, you know, conferences on leadership and you know, how to be a good leader. So all of these, uh, you know, mission works are there. And most of the time, what we do is we send our church folks, uh, mature church believers who go, now they don't have a they may not be pastors they may not be teachers of the word but they're mature in christ and they are able to go out and 
you know, go out on missions. And so what happens is believers are ministering to one another and they're ministering to people around the world. So it's no longer, OK, I'm in the corporate. I will only be in the corporate, and I'll come on Sunday, serve and go. No. right? It's, it's more of, hey, I'm in the corporate. In the corporate sector, I am a minister of God. I am called to be a minister. And on Sunday, I am there to serve, volunteer. And apart from that, God is also calling me to reach out, to minister to people around me. So we move the church from this place of only being recipients to a place of giving, right? to a place of ministering. Right? Now, again, as pastors and leaders, we must, we must be able to identify right? uh, good leaders. Right? So for example, if, you're, if you want to start a life group, Right. We cannot just choose anyone, right? We need to make sure because the life group leader is going to be ministering to about 10 people within the church. So what he he or she says is very important, right? So we need to train them. We, we need to understand like, okay, this, uh, this person, okay, he or she has caught the vision of the church, uh, has been regular to church, understands our theo the theology of the church, the doctrines of the church, uh, understands how the church moves, um, right? So, because the dangers are, if, for example, right, um, somebody comes into church and you know they say, "Hey, uh, you you look like you can be a good leader." We appoint them, and then later we realize, uh, you know, appoint them as a life group leader, and they are ministering to people. And later we realize, "Hey, he does not believe in the supernatural." What happens? It becomes a problem. Right? So it's very important to know the person, to, especially when they're coming into a place of leadership. And then once we know them, we know their doctrine, we know what they believe in, we know their works, we release them to begin to minister to people. Right? And you will find people that way, right? They who are learning, who are growing. Uh, they'll be two years, three years in the church. And eventually, we can give them opportunities. Right, uh, and then the fifth stage. Uh, I just want to apologize for the sound because there's some, uh, you know, construction that's happening. So if the sound is disturbing. Uh, uh, I apologize for that. So, uh, but please let me know if my voice is all right, if I'm audible enough. Right? Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the fifth point. Now, from the equipping stage, you've equi you're, we are equipping people within the church to go out, to train, to lead others. Then comes the apostolic mindset. And this is, again, uh, a, a phase of uh, you know, just going about doing bigger things. So it's no longer, I am a pastor of this church. You may be a pastor of this church. But the moment you get into this apostolic function, it, the mindset changes. Right. Now, it's not like you're saying, OK, I don't want anything to do with the home church. No. Uh, uh, but your priorities have changed. Remember the pioneering stage? In the pioneering stage, you're thinking about your church. right? In the administrative stage, organizational stage, you're thinking about your church. right? I need to get things right within the church. Pastoral stage, you're looking at the next generation or the leaders that are required. Equipping stage, you're looking at, OK, everyone in the church should come to a place of reaching out to people. But now, it's not only the church inside. right? It's not about only equipping people within the church. But rather than the focus being internal, the focus is now being more external. All this while, the first four points were 85 to 90 percent internal. Now, they, when you get into the apostolic stage, 80 to 90 percent is external, 10 percent is internal. Why? Because you've established a good framework here. So, as a senior pastor, as a leader of the ministry, you can begin to freely move out, go to places, gain new territory, get you know, start new programs, 
Now, for example, you're a senior pastor and somebody calls you and says, hey, why don't you come to this city, a different city or a different nation? Why don't you come minister to us? Now you feel it's a good opportunity. Now imagine it's it's 10 years you have your church and you're still worried, oh, if I come, who will preach on Sunday? That means what? Stage three has not been established properly. Right? Because we need to have people on board, on the team, who can take up responsibilities. Right? It should never be that 10 years after a church that you are the only person who are preaching. It should never be that way. There should be other leaders. So now, in the apostolic function, the senior pastor has people. So even if his presence is not there for a limited period of time, it's all right. Everything will go on. The wheels are in motion. Why? So for example, the senior pastor says, I, I'm going for a month. Now uh, I've been uh, you know, doing a couple of events to, in a different nation. Now, we don't have to panic. Why? There's a conference coming up. OK, we have the teams. We have the administrative team. We have the organization. We have the structure. Everything is set in place. Just follow the ad structure. Everything will be done perfectly. Right? So the apostolic stage, the church begins to actively reproduce itself uh, in regions beyond, meaning in different places. Uh, new churches are planted different, not only in the city, but in different parts of the city, different states, different nations. The church begins to minister. Right? Uh, believers have an apostolic mindset, meaning they're they're willing to sacrifice, go to new places, build God's kingdom, speak into people's lives, minister to people. Right? And something that we have is, I'm sure many of you have heard of it all these years. We had uh, the short-term Bible college. We had, uh, again, missions that we would go to. And uh, uh, it was wonderful to see, you know, even in the short-term Bible college, we had our church members going and teaching. Right, and I say they would go. Uh, life group leaders, few of them, they would go teach and come. Right, so it's not always oh the pastors are coming to teach. No, uh, uh, and so why are we doing that? So that we understand that hey, as a church, we are apostolic in nature. We want to go gain ground. Imagine five people in the pastoral team. Example, right? Five of them are doing all the missions. Now what? Uh, how will how will how will the church function? Right? We we cannot. We need others to go. We need others to take up uh, responsibilities. So the local church, that is your pioneering the point number one. Your pioneering base, your starting church, the local church, has become the missions base rather than a spiritual nursery. Meaning, more than just you know looking after people. Uh, you know, caring for them, and which is all important, right? I'm not saying that's not important, right? The church is always priority. You know, as pastors, uh, uh, the church is everything to them. They, their heart, their life is for the church, right? Uh, uh, but rather than just being a place of, you know, just providing spiritual growth and all of that, which is important, it becomes a place of. Uh, uh, becomes a missions base where we send out people to different cities, different nations, and they go and start a work of for God. Right. So, no more is it just looking after. Hey, uh, again, even as all this is happening, the other things are still going on. The wheels are in motion, right? Sunday services are going on. FTV is coming. People get connected to church. People get connected to volunteer teams, life groups. All of that is happening. But as a senior pastor and as leaders, you're saying, hey, we are becoming a missional church, an apostolic church. We're going to raise up leaders, send them out. They will go start new churches, plant new churches, start new ministries, gain gr new ground. And then what the best part is, they've seen 
what is what we do in the local church right they have seen how they function they have seen what works what does not work so they're able to replicate this in other places right and eventually we want to become self-sustaining meaning establish ongoing discipleship believe equipping of believers leadership development raising up of new leaders all of this and then become financially stable so all of this will happen right uh, but here's the thing we cannot be in a hurry we need to go along with god go along with what he is doing understand how he's working uh, make the right decisions at the right time learn from your mistakes trust in god have faith in him god will definitely do this right uh, because because his promise is, uh, you know, he says, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right? So he will build. Right? Uh, all he's asking is for us to put our hands to work. Right. So these are the five stages, growth and consolidation. Uh, and, uh, you know, these are certain areas that if you are planning to uh, start, a, a church pioneering a church just go over it think about it think about see the way we do the administration or the organization the structure is in one way so you can choose what works for you in your setting in 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 you know how you feel uh, that you know the leadership should be you can do what works for you right uh, and then you can also make changes if you feel that it's not working make changes right see okay should it, should we do it this way rather than this way right so again we ask god for wisdom to do that but then it's important to have these set in place and eventually we will see growth we will see uh, consolidation that is strengthening uh, what we already have right uh, any questions any thoughts you'd like to share uh, i know we always only one talking. Uh, everyone are so quiet. Any thoughts? Any of you uh, have been involved in church planting work, like maybe with your pastors or part of a core team uh, starting church? Any one of you would like to share? Nobody? Nobody's been part of a uh, or even if it's not a new church, but at least uh, maybe a new ministry within the church. Um, or what are things that, uh, in, in terms of organization, administration, uh, what are things that you learned uh, or you see in your church? Uh, would you like to share that? You know, It'll be a good learning uh, administratively. Uh, uh, if you'd like to share, you can share. Nobody? Okay. I know that Rosalind uh, serves in the church. I'm not sure uh, at what capacity Rosalind. Zeli also, right? Do you also serve in the church? Uh, uh, okay. All right. Um, Go ahead, Zeli. Yeah, I was APC team, but uh, before APC, uh, before I joined APC ministry, uh, way back in 2011, um, I was a part of a ministry, church ministry in Kohima, where after my Bible school, you know, like uh, uh, three of my friends and our mentor, we started a church, we planted the church. And uh, it was such a... Uh, great experience and a great uh, learning experience for me because um, I had no much uh, such experience at that time. I, I was uh, fr freshly graduated from the Bible school, mm -hmm. but by faith we started the ministry. It was you know, for, I think around six months, there was intense, you know, prayer session. You know, we used to pray and we used to go around the locality, not uh, 
praying uh, around that locality, claiming the lost souls and all those things. And uh, yeah, and now I'm not a part of that ministry, but I see growth in that ministry. And our, uh, my mentor there, he's doing a great job. Yeah, wonderful, praise God wonderful, for that. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for sharing, Zeli. Yes. Uh, anybody else would like to share? Uh, All right, all right, no worries. So let's uh, get into the next chapter. Uh, feel free to stop me at any time if you want to share any thoughts or questions. Uh, chapter 15, we'll talk about multiplication and branching out, right? Uh, so multiplication and branching is self-explanatory, right? Just multiplying. We see that uh, in the book of Acts, there were churches, they multiplied. And it just kept growing. Many churches were planted and many people were equipped. So one of the things that we can do uh, once you're, uh, again, we've talked about this, right? You've planted the local church. You've pioneered the church. One or two years down the line, or even five years, right? Uh, the time frame is something that we can choose, right? Uh, but one or maybe one to five years down the line, plant additional churches within the city. Right? Now, even as you do that, how do you go about doing it? One, envision the church, share the vision with the church. Right. So the thing is, sometimes we have the vision in our heart, but we need to share it with them, share it with the church. Right. So I remember in Mangalore, uh, we were about 55 to 60 people in the church. Um, and we had a whole group of, uh, you know, Mangalore is a place where people would come from different cities to study. And right? so uh, we had a whole group of Northeast community. Right? So there were about 20 of them. Now, uh, they were all, few, they, were, they would come to church, but they were not very regular. Right. So I used to talk to them. I used to ask them what happened. Why is it? Uh, so they give valid reasons. They said, see, Sunday is the day, the only day where they get to rest because Monday to Saturday they have hectic schedules studying the whole day. Sunday is the only day they get to rest. And two is since it's a Sunday, the the transport, the road or the vehicle transport facilities are lesser. So they have to travel about 12 kilometers only to get to church. Right? And our church service starts at 10 o'clock, 10.30. So they said, these are the challenges that we face. So. What happened was I spoke to them and I said, how about since you want to rest on Sundays and the distance is too far, how about we start an evening church service near your area, near your colleges? So all 20 of you can come. Right? So I checked with them, is evening OK? They all were very happy. They said, yes, evening is perfect because we get up late. And it's understandable. They are young children, young guys, right? Young people, early 18, 19, 20 years old. Uh, so I said, okay, it's fine. You you can rest on Sunday, take your time, go, get good rest, do whatever work you have. Evening service, and it's just five minutes away from your hostel. So do you think this will work? They said, yes, it'll be perfect. We all will come. And there are many students over here. We can invite them also, and I'm sure they'll come. So what happened was I said, OK, give me three months. So I said to them, uh, one of the regular students, I said, give me three months. So what we did was, what I did was I called the church together and I said, OK, this is what the vision is now. We want to start another location. Now, we didn't want to start just because, OK, we have nothing to do. That was not the point. So I shared that. You know, we shared that, hey, this is where it is. The students are staying far away. These are the challenges. That's why they aren't able to come. So let us keep this in prayer. Three months, we'll pray. And we'll also ask God to open the right door for us. So we kept it in prayer. We prayed as a church. And then one church member, I, I remember very clearly, I was in Bangalore attending a conference. Right? So I had come from Bangalore to Bangalore to another city. And we were, I was attending a conference, and I got a call from our church member who was there in Bangalore. And he said, I found the perfect place for church. And I've also spoken to the owner. 
and the owner was very good very kind he said you know we can go ahead he's ready to give us the space and it's exactly opposite the college it'll take the students two minutes to get there and it can seat about a hundred people inside now i didn't go searching i didn't do anything right they went and then they did every these are all church members because the vision was already shared with them so they went they saw the place they got the appointment with the owner i went with them we spoke we got the permissions here from bangalore permissions were granted we got the space the church church themselves came forward and said you know what i want to give for the chairs i want to give for the stage i want to give for the you know uh, music for the speaker everyone contributed something now we never asked them what happened they themselves came forward why did that happen because they caught the vision oh we are ministering to students so students are important they are the next generation so after three months we started the church and when we started we did the same thing what we do in the Mangalore, in the main church same thing same service same sermon everything is the same right the first sunday we had so many people who came uh if i'm not wrong we were somewhere around 35 people first sunday of the launch of the church 35 odd people came right uh and over time uh, the church began to grow unfortunately what happened was uh the lockdown came and so many of the students uh, you know went back home it was early 20 early 2020 uh and and then many of the students went back home and when they went back home you know uh we had to close it down because there was no church services at all so we went back to going online uh but a lot of these students uh you know were able to minister to a lot of the students you know remember the work that is done and even now we have a, a church plan there so envision send share the vision with them send out church planting teams right now here's the thing for new church plants churches function independently or they can function as one church many congregations and then you have churches as satellite churches live stream and then you have campus pastors now let me explain this to you first one churches functioning independently now you can have a church right so uh, i'll just share from what we do at apc right so we have churches all across india so the churches in north india right different states they don't follow the same pattern that we do here because many of them are in towns and villages so they function independently so for example they whenever they'd like they do youth meeting men's ministry women's break women's conference whenever they feel they they are independent but they're part of apc but whatever they plan they plan they do it uh, right then you have churches which functions as one church that is what's happening in bangalore north south east west central we all function as one church it is the same sermon it is the same pattern it is the same order of service at all locations so if you go and sit in any of our bangalore locations north south east west or central it is the same and of course the worship songs may be different the worship leaders choose different songs but but it is the same sermon it is the same ppt it is the same order of service so we we serve as one so for example we have a men's conference or a women's conference what happens emailers go out to all of them north south east west central we have a chms we have a tool we choose male and age group click on it we get all the you know uh, men this age group 30 to 60 and then we send them an email so it's not like okay men's conference is only for central and for north and south it's another another day no we function as one church all of us 
so we, we always leave this option open a person can move from central to another location or from another location to central right? it, it's not like we are hey why did you go there no we are all one one church so whether they go to central whether they go to north south they're part of the church one church many congregations then you have the satellite church now the satellite churches nowadays is and this is already happening in the west and it's slowly coming in and i'm sure in a couple of years we will have it here in uh, in our nation as well uh, is most of the times what happens is uh, if if there's a church you have a campus pastor right so what happens is the worship uh, happens there uh, locally and then when the sermon time comes the sermon is broadcasted from the main church so the main senior pastor is preaching and everyone in this church are watching the sermon live probably on the projector or LED screen whatever right but you have a campus pastor to look after the needs of the people right um, now the Lord's table and all of it may be done locally itself worship you'll have worship teams everything is done locally uh, but when it comes to the sermon it, now this is just an example right there are churches which have uh, you know people even the pastors are preaching in the campus church as well but uh, most of these live stream satellite churches work this way now it's not very um, uh, it's not a growing thing in right now in our nation it's not maybe a couple of churches have tried it uh, but we know that uh, it can happen soon we can do it it's it's an avenue that we can god will definitely open for us so we can be in for example we can be in bangalore and the sunday sermon is being preached live and we can have somebody in maybe france sitting we can have an apc campus group in france sitting in a college maybe 50 of them sitting there and they are watching it uh together as a community that becomes a satellite church right uh, now again the functions within that that church will may differ right they may have different kinds of events youth meeting uh, men's ministry women's ministry children's ministry all of that will be happening but for the sunday service it's it works that way right and multiplication also includes planting new churches in other cities as well right so one of the things that uh, one of the ways that we have planted churches across our nation is through bible colleges so we have people coming from different cities and they would come they would uh, study here and they, you know some of them would approach and say hey uh, i want to start a church here in my hometown so they go back we help them uh, to start a church initially just help them to plant the church uh, give them uh, spiritual guidance uh, just be a backbone be a support to them and so all of our almost all of our uh, outreach churches have been started that way most of them are our uh, BC alumni, uh, Bible college students who've passed on, right? So envision them again, where even as Bible college students go, give them, uh, you know, uh, options to start church plants and be there to give them spiritual oversight, spiritual direction, nurture, to build them up, right? Uh, now, here's the thing. In the initial of, of this phase of sending out people, planting new uh, churches in cities and towns, um, the senior pastor will have to make decisions, right? Because now planting a church could involve a lot of finances, a lot of buying of uh, material, um, uh, you know, in terms of uh, renting out a space, buying chairs, buying speakers. So the senior pastor has to be involved, right? And once the church has established and started, uh, maybe three, four months down the line, you can send people there. That's what the church in Jerusalem did. If you see in the book of Acts, they sent Barnabas to Antioch because Antioch, the church was growing and it was a new church plant. So Barnabas went there. Barnabas said, hey, I need some help here. He goes and finds uh, Saul of Tarsus. 
but and and that's how they launched out on their first missionary journey after that so so it's it's good to do this right even as they plant now if you feel that you're financially not yet there to help a church plants it's all right right it's all right you, you give it some time right you can also uh, encourage them to you know start in a small way right maybe you know cell group or a small group and then encourage them to build on that right so some of the uh, urban church growth models that we see uh, one of the most common models is uh, uh, yoido full gospel in soil korea which is uh, uh, david paul yonggi cho uh, where he for many years was the church was you know just stuck in a certain space right a certain number uh, but he used the model of cell groups and through the cell groups uh, same thing with the bogoda church in uh, colombia uh, uh, here also they replicated yoido full gospel and in a couple of years the churches the church began to expand and enlarge hundreds and thousands of people started coming to cell groups eventually uh, they were connected to the church right so then you have different kinds of churches the uh, calvary temple in hyderabad which has again a huge uh, following billow creek community saddleback church which is rick warren's church uh, mars hill mark the um, elevation church which elevation is the one of the churches which are uh, which have live stream and satellite campuses right so uh, uh, and then there was huge explosive church growth in uh, East Africa as well, uh, not only East Africa, in the entire nation of Africa, there was huge churches. People uh, use different kinds of models and uh, of church growth, and God was, you know, just building the church. Uh, so the APC biblical blueprint model is something that we that we always follow is to is that every believer is a minister and each one of us can reach out the gospel for jesus christ right uh, and and these growth models yes growth is not only physic in numbers but it's also in the spiritual right uh, so we'll stop here we'll pick up from spiritual aspects uh next class that'll be next week uh and and we'll build on this. Uh, I hope, and I I do know that each one of us are learning, and uh, but it'll be good to really, you know, use these pointers. Where if if you've been thinking about starting a church or how to go about it, you know, uh, these pointers will definitely help, right? Uh, um, uh, you know, sometimes it's just that initial step, and then once you get into it, you know, God. God is faithful. He He will support us. He will strengthen us. Right. Uh, Zeli says, sorry, I meant uh, it was the year 2003. Wow. Okay. Right. Thank you, Zeli, for sharing. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this class. And uh, we'll catch up next week. Uh, continue on the spiritual aspects when it comes to church planting. Right. God bless. Have a great week ahead. Thank you, Pastor. Welcome, welcome.